Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatha Parakamlam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Sya Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatham Bitam Tham Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Rana Krishna Paran Sahagana Lalita Shivishakam Bitam Sya Om Ajnana Timuranda Sya Gyanajana Shalakaya Chakshuram Yatam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama Gurva Bistam Supurakam Gurganara Sisha Sambushitam Chintya Chintya Samasta Veda Nepanam Shri Rupa Patanugam Govinda Bidam Ujjwalam Varatanum Bhaktyan Bidam Sundaram Mande Vishwa Gurunsha Divyat Bhagavat Premna Vibhijapranam Devam Divyatanam Suchanda Vadanam Balarka Chelanchitam Sandra Nanda Puram Sadeka Varanam Vairagya Vidyambunim Shri Siddhanta Nidhim Subhakti Lasitam Saraswatanam Varam Manditam Shubhanam Madhika Sharanam Nyashishwara Sridharam Mansha Kopatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patita Nam Paveni Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namonama Namo Mahabharanyaya Krishna Prima Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gaurata Vishenama So we're continuing with our reading of Sri Sikshastakam, the uh, divine principles and teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, and we're reading today the fourth of the Sikshastakam verses. So Sikshastakam, the precepts of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is this fourth Sikshastakam verse, Anuloy Devotion. Nadanam Najanam Nasundarim Kavitam Vaga Vajagadi Shayakamaye Mama Janmani Janmani Shware Bhavatad Bhakti Rahaitu Kitvai Nadanam Najanam Nasundarim Kavitam Vajagadi Shayakamaye Mama Janmani Janmani Shware Bhavatad Bhakti Rahaitu Kitvai O oh Lord, I have no desires to accumulate wealth, followers, beautiful women, or salvation. My only prayer is for your causeless devotional service, birth after birth. O oh Lord, I have no desires to accumulate wealth, followers, beautiful women, or salvation. My only prayer for your causeless devotional service uh, is your cause. My only prayer is for your causeless devotional service, birth after birth. We should try to move in this direction. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, I don't want any money, Nadanam. I don't want any popularity or manpower, Najanam. I don't want the company of beautiful ladies, Nasundarim. I don't want a good name or the fame of a poet, Kavitam, Kavitamba. This is the general meaning of this verse, but it has been deeply dealt with in the com commentaries of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Our Guru Maharaj has commented that in this verse, wealth, followers, women, and scholarship represent duty, wealth, sense, pleasure, and salvation. Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. Bhakti Vinod Thakur has explained that in this connection, wealth means the wealth which comes from following one's prescribed duties. It can also mean Artha, economic development, he says that followers mean physical relationship for comforts, wife, children, and so forth. The word sundari means kama, the company of beautiful ladies. And kavitam, poetry, represents moksha, liberation. Liberation apparently has a high value, but really, like poetry, it is only flowery words. Liberation is imaginary because the ultimate result of liberation is that one's existence vanishes. So this service capitalist, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, O Lord of the universe, I only pray for spontaneous devotion to you without motive for any reward. I want a natural serving attitude. Prema means affection, love. Prema must, uh, Prema means I shall serve you and in remuneration, you must give me more of a tendence, more of a tendency to serve you, uh, more energy and more hankering to serve you. My affection for you will be enhanced 
and the interest will become capital, just as in the money lending business. In this way, a devotee prays to Krishna, I'm serving you, and if you want to pay me something, then give me more capital to increase my serving tendency so it may be more enhanced. More capital means more desire to serve you. Wherever I am born according to my karma, I acquire I aspire only for your service, my Lord, and I pray for unmotivated service, not for anything else in return. The general temptation that surrounds us on four sides is four classes, money, followers, women, and liberation. And that means dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. In this way, the gradations of different goals of life have been scientifically represented. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, I have no attraction for any of these things, but only for you, my Lord. I don't even aspire after liberation. I will not even ask, give me liberation. For being liberated, I will be able to serve you better. That sort of condition must be placed, that sort of condition must not be placed on divinity. This is the purest of prayers. According to my karma, I may be, I may be bird or beast, Guru Garanga Gandharvika Giridharju Ki Jai. According to my karma, I may be bird or beast, here or there, or even in hell. It does not matter. My whole aspiration is concentrated on one thing alone. I pray that my attraction for you may never be lost. I pray that it must always be enhanced. Bhakti devo devotion is a haituki, causeless. It is quite natural and has no other aspiration. Someone may say, if interest is always being reinvested as capital, I will never enjoy the profit. But we are interested, but we are interested in enjoyment by self-giving. Let others enjoy it my, at my cost. That is the basis of the highest enjoyment. The devotee thinks, let Krishna enjoy with others, I will be the scapegoat. Bhakti Vinod Thakur says that when a baby has no knowledge and an enemy or a disease comes to attack him, he cannot defend himself. In the same way in the beginning, when one's realization of the holy name is in the childlike stage, then crimes and offenses against the name can prevail. When one's realization is grown up, no offense can approach him, but so many offenses may come and attack the beginner. The Suicide Squad. Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, The holy name is so beautiful, gracious, and charming. Let me die along with all the offenses against it, so others may enjoy its nectar. He wants to sacrifice himself, just as in wartime, with bombs under their armpits, the suicide would jump into a ship's chimney. The Suicide Squad began with Japan's campaign against the British, and when Hitler heard of their fearlessness, he said, we have something yet to learn from Japan. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur prays, I want to finish myself along with all the offenses against the name that others may enjoy the nectar of the holy name. Vasudeva Dutta also prayed, give the sins of all souls to me and throw me into eternal hell so that they may benefit. Give them love of Krishna. By that highly generous sentiment, he does not die, it is said, die to live. When we have so much appreciation for the Lord that we feel this kind of sentiment, we find a living attainment of higher life. That is the enjoyment we want. The last verse of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sikshastikam will explain this feeling. Another example of this is found when the great sage Narada came to the gopis and asked them for the dust of their lotus feet for the treatment of Krishna's headache. Here we find self-abnegation to the highest degree, and that is the whole point of devotion. The very life of a devotee is based on sacrifice. As much as there is sacrifice, there is benefit, and sacrifice means die to live. This is a favorite saying of mine. These are Hegel's words, die to live. Krishna is the highest consumer known to the world. We should not hesitate to give ourselves to him.
So there are many sentiments of sh and ideas of Srila Sridhar expressed in these commentaries. The verse is nadanam na janam na sundarim kavitam va jagadishaya kamaye mama janmani janmanishwari bhavatad bhaktira haitukitvai that the translation again is uh, this is unalloyed devotion and O oh Lord, I have no desire to accumulate wealth, followers, beautiful women, or salvation. My only prayer is for your causeless devotional service, birth after birth. So here, in this verse, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is rejecting what are the normal goals of the Vedas. The Vedas are, people are reading the Vedas for some self-betterment. So, but, but as we see, when Narad Muni spoke with Veda Vyas, he, he chastised him for not presenting what is the true goal. He said, you presented these four goals of Dharma, Arta, Kama, and Moksha, but you've only confused people. This is not the real attainment of, of success in life. This is not what one is after, but you've tried to motivate people. Sometimes, sometimes we see some, something is offered as a, as a premium. If you take to this, you'll get this benefit. So, so many times we are sometimes uh, approached when we walk on the street and, and persons will ask you, are you saved? And sometimes they have a Bible in their hand and they'll say, are you saved? And they sometimes explain what are the consequences of not being saved. And in this way, that first of all, that's, that very idea is somewhat a violation of what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching. Because in the previous verse, he said, Trinata pi suni chena taru ariva sahishnuna amanina manadena kirtaniya sadahari. Uh, he says one should feel oneself to be lower than the straw in the street, more tolerant than a, a tree, uh, able to offer respect to others without asking for respect in turn. In such a state, one can chant the holy name constantly. So those are humility, offering respect to others, and tolerance. So how is it humility if someone says, are you saved? And they're talking as if they are saved and they can and they can distribute this commodity. Now they may say, well, I'm doing it in the safe for in the, for the sake of preaching. And I'm saying that that's all right. But that is, again, offering a false goal, because normally the Vedas deal with these and I can and they're and they're rejected in the Srimad Bhagavatam. As Narad Muni said to Veda Vyas, you're confusing people. And, it, and the Srimad Bhagavatam says, Dharma projita kaitava tra paramo nir mat saranam satam. The Bhagavatam is saying that these cheating goals are not the real goals of, of what is the perfection of life, and these things are rejected from Srimad Bhagavatam. Cheating, kaitava. And what's it say? Then why is it saying that? Because normally these will be the goals, dharma, some duty or religiosity. And sometimes that duty is very confused. People will say, uh, give us this day our daily bread. So there's some conditions being placed upon their, upon their, their um, religiosity that they're hoping to get some benefit from, from that, give us this day our daily bread. It's not directly a, a prayer like that because they are recognizing the Lord is sustaining them. But at the same time, that Dharma is very much related with Arta, that people are praying to be able to be successful in life. Arta means economic development. So that's another goal. Dharma is general religiosity or can be said to be duty. And arta is some 
benefit. I'm thinking that by being a righteous person, I will be also successful in this life. Art. And then part of that success, what do I expect out of that? Kama. Now, kama can be translated as lust, but generally in this sense, and what Mahaprabhu is talking about, uh, dharma, arta, kama, he says, nadanam, najanam, na sundarim. Sundarim can be translated as a beautiful woman, as sundari, as, as beauty. Sundarim is beautiful woman, or more pertinent to the verse will be a beautiful wife. So that will also be a goal. People will want to be religious. They will want to be economically successful. They'll want to enjoy. So we can say, well, what is a beautiful wife? And beauty doesn't, as we've seen, as we get older, that beauty doesn't last forever. But that means an enjoyable life, nasundarim, that enjoying life in that way. And, and then, nadanam najanam nasundarim kavitam vajagadishai kamayi. Now, that kavi means a poet, but also it's dealing with the flowery words of the Vedas and what do they lead to? What do they ultimately lead to? that one can get moksha, liberation. After I've been in this world for so long, I've executed all my duties, I've been successful in life, I've attained, you know, people will explain it in very strange ways. People will say that, as I've noted, that they'll say, success, I've been successful because I've worked very hard in this life. I've worked very hard, therefore I've attained success. And what about the times when you weren't successful, when you had, when you were an abject failure? Oh, that's just due to bad luck or just didn't get the breaks. So when they get success, it's all due to me, to my hard work. And when I don't have success, when I fail at something, that's not due to me. That's just due to bad luck or I didn't get the breaks or something like that. So anyway, after attaining some uh, religious duty or some or executing their duty or religion their dharma or just what they consider as their duty in life then they get some economic development then they get some enjoyment and at the end when they've attained all those things then naturally they're looking for as the man on the street is is preaching salvation are you saved so they're looking for salvation or, in terms of the Vedas, we'll say liberation. Liberation just means that I'll get um, released from this cycle of birth and death, like that. So these will be normal, the normal goals of people, but these are not really the goals of what Mahaprabhu is talking about. He says, I don't want any of these things. And then people will say, well, you're still asking for something. You're asking for a better birth, etc." No, not asking for that. It can be a, I can be born in any, any place or any species. That's not the point. So what is Mahaprabhu saying? What I really want is mama janmani janmani shwari bhavatad bhaktira haitukhi tvai. I just want to have a relation with you, my Lord. I want to have a relationship with your devotees, those who are serving you. And in this way, if, you, if, if I ask for anything, the only thing I'm asking is that I may get more devotion unto you. I've served you, but at, I'm, what am I asking for? More devotion. I'm not asking for anything, any kind of betterment of myself. I only want more and more taste for serving you, more, more, rela more service to you. That's, and in Srila Srinamarsh, it's a very nice example. He compares that to the money lenders, to the money lenders. I had a grandmother. She, her profession was somewhat in, in, in doubt. As she, one of her businesses, among others, was money lending. 
So she would give loans to people who couldn't, didn't have good credit. They couldn't get loans from the bank, but they could get a loan from her, but at higher interest, much higher interest than the banks. She would do that, also be involved in taking bets and things. But anyway, this was my dear grandmother. And so she was, the, the, so I, know, I didn't live, I left that place where they were living when I was four years old. So I didn't really know them so well. But I can say something that what I do know, not through her, but about the money lending business. So a successful money lender loans money to somebody and gets back maybe 20% interest. Then they get the 20% back interest, means whatever cap capital they had, they get back that amount plus 20% more. So now they have 120% of what they had before and they loan that to the next person. And that person will pay them back with 20%. So uh, when they, when, when first was 100, then becomes 120, and then it becomes 240, uh, it becomes 144, and then it's 144 times 100, you know, 144 times 1.2, whatever that is, it becomes like maybe 170, and then it will become like over 200. So it started with 100, but each time increasing. So Mahaprabhu is praying like that, and it com it's compared by Guru Marsh in his commentary, like the money lenders, that they will... He's asking, the only thing I want from you is more devotion, more desire to serve you. And then I can serve you, and I'll, again, if, you, if I ask for anything, I won't ask for, I won't ask for uh, followers, I won't nadanam, I won't ask for money, nadjanam, I won't ask for to be famous or followers, I, I won't ask for enjoyment, I won't ask for liberation. I'll only ask to have more desire to serve you. And always like that, more desire to serve you. Because, again, I know in, yeah, there's some commentary that they have in Mexico, they say. Uh, uh, the person, he's getting, getting money, and then he's, he says, uh, what will you do with this money? I'll buy land. And what will you do with that land? I'll plant corn. And what will you do with the corn? I'll sell that corn. And then what will you do with the money you get from selling that corn? I'll buy more land. And then what will you do? I'll, I'll, I'll plant more corn. And what will you do when you sell the corn? I'll buy more land. So it's like a joke that they have, how it's how one becomes involved in a cyclical thing. All, he, all the person can think about is corn, money, and land, and then increasing. But in this case, Mahaprabhu is showing how the devotees actually are more interested in sacrificing their own interest. He, gives a, a, he talks about the suicide squad. We have one devotee here, Bimala, who comes here sometimes. She used to talk with, with Srila Govinda Mars. But she could not pronounce suicide squad, so she would call it uh, Suidadal, like that she had her accent. She's from Brazil. Suidadal side, Suidadal side squad. So, but Although she could not pronounce it, she was very much dedicated to that concept that she only wanted to serve Gurudev and she wanted to sell, to give up her own, to sacrifice her own enjoyment. And it is said that sometimes we hear 
about in other religions, the goal will be self-sacrifice. But, but Srila Sridhar talks about in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, it's to the extreme of self-forgetfulness. One loses sight, not even a question of sacrifice. One is losing sight of one's interest completely. It's not a question of sacrifice. One has forgotten one's own interest. One, rather, one has come to the, a higher position of just being involved continually in wanting to serve the Lord. So I give that example of her because I see that her example is she is, in her own way, she's a very dedicated person. She's only, Gurudev also mentioned Yudamanyu. He said his only question was, will this please you? Will my actions, what, what, your, what, I'm, what service I can do, will it please you? And if it pleases you, then I'm, interest, I'm interested in that service. So the very nice, nice verse, na dhanam na janam na sundarim kavitam va jagadishaya kamaye mama janmani janmani shwari bhavatad bhaktira haitukitvai. And as I said, this rejection of what is normally some person's goals in attaining and executing religion, the goals that they'll have in terms of what is called religion. But really, what is being presented by Mahaprabhu, we can say, as you might understand from these terms, it's not really religion. <clears throat> Mahaprabhu is teaching devotional service. So if you talk about, there may be Dharma, which may be your duty or your religion, but there is also what's called Sanatan Dharma. Sanatan Dharma means that what is your eternal, you can say, what are you doing eternally? Eternally, your in, internal, the activities of your soul. It's re, very much related to the, to the soul. Mahaprabhu says, Jivar Swarub Oi Krishna Nityadas. He's saying that the ex, actual identity, or we can say the constitutional position, the identity, of one is that, or of, I'm a soul, and who is the soul? The soul is the eternal servant of Krishna. Now Krishna refers to the Supreme Lord, and so, Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha and Adir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karana. That the Supreme Ishvara, he has his, his name is Krishna. And what, it, what does Krishna refer to? It refers to that person who can attract everyone. Normally we think of God, and we think of God as someone who's old, because he's the supreme being and he's eternal. He must have a very long white beard. But that is, this, the, Krishna is not at all like that. Krishna may be so old in terms of that he's an et eternally the supreme being, but he always looks like a youth. Sometimes I wonder, I see people endeavor so much for making their life longer, prolonging their life through medicine, through, through so many disciplines, through exercises, all these things. They want to increase the duration of their life but sometimes I wonder, why is that so important to increase the duration of one's old age? You know, one, is, one has become old, and yet they want to increase the duration of their life. Some people, they'll get frozen with the hope that they can get some cure in the fu future, and, and medicine can cure their ailments sometime in the future. Well, why is that so important to prolong the disadvantages of old age to do that? Rather, one, one would seem to, seem to be more interested in what is one's eternal life. And eternal life doesn't mean it's just an old person. 
with all the material benefits that we've accumulated in life, then it's of no value at all. One time I had an Maharaj, he, I think it was like a Greek or a Roman fable or something, but it was somebody who wished for eternal life, but forgot to accompany that wish with eternal youthfulness. So they just got older and older and older and just couldn't die. And just... Yeah, that's what people's conception is of the prolong prolongation of life because they, they, they're thinking to go back to their youth, that's impossible. So they just want to prolong, don't want to die. I'm just going to continue to live even if it means getting older and older and older. That's, but the, but the real life is Navayovanam. No, real life is also as, as a youth, not as an old person. But anyway, our, our, I'm saying of, of Krishna, Krishna's eternal person, the supreme person, but he's not old. He's always appearing as a fresh youth. And there are many persons relating, related with Krishna. Some of them are his friends. Some of them are his persons who are serving him in the dasharas. Some of them are his friends. Some of them are his elders. And they may be elder, more elderly. They may have a relationship with the Lord as, as father, mother, guru. That's called Vatsalya Ras. And then Madhura Ras is that there are persons who have a relationship with the Lord as lovers. So all these things are going on in different relationships. But as long as we're chained to the conception of what is normal, cons normal ideas about religion, then people will want these things. Their dharma, their duty, they'll be bound to the, the dictates of their religion, the dharma, the, the dhanam, dharma, artha. And then comes artha, they'll be interested in how they can benefit. I'm religious, but I'm religious so that I can be successful in life. Obviously, I'm not religious so that I can be unsuccessful in life. I'm thinking that because I'm very obedient and very faithful that the Lord will take care of me. He'll give me a good job. I'll get a good job. I'll be successful. And I'll get a nice, I'll have a nice home and all the benefits that come with that. Nice wife and friends. And they'll all go with me to heaven, of course. Was it you, you, we heard about one man who was told, one man, he, 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 was, he was old, but he prayed. He prayed that he could take his wealth with him. But he told, you can't take anything with you. No, just make one exception for me. Just an exception for me. All right. We'll give you 24 hours before you come to to heaven. You can you can get all the you can take all your wealth with you. And I thought, well, what do I do if I go to heaven? I don't know that paper currency will be any good, and I don't know what'll be valuable. So I thought, I know gold. So he converted all of his money. To, to gold, to gold blocks. So then, then he went to, to heaven, and, they, and then he was, okay, you can come. Uh, you told me I could come, so I'm taking one bag with me, with all my wealth. In it. So, okay, can I look in the bag? And he said, and and he said. Um, he opened the bag, which is full of gold blocks. The person said, paving stones? <laughs> <laughs> paving stones. You're bringing, ro you're br bringing what they use for paving the road or something? That's what you brought with you? <laughs> yeah. 
where people that's, they, they try to impose a mundane conception of what is heaven. They try to impose that. But, they, but their imagination won't take them to really what is, what is the quality of pure service and a pure relationship with the Lord. So here, here Mahaprabhu is talking about that. He's say, saying that I don't want... Uh, I don't want wealth, I don't want followers, I don't want fame, I don't want beautiful women, I don't want enjoyment. I don't even want liberation. I'll, any birth that I take, all I'm asking, I'm not even asked to be saved or get salvation. The only thing I'm asking for is association with your devotees. It doesn't matter if I come back as anything, bird, beast, bug, anything. All I want to do is not forget you, my Lord, and have some desire for serving you. And you can do with me as you choose. Mm -hmm. Example given here also that Srila Sridhar Mars talks about those who sacrifice themselves for some ideal, like he mentions, and we, we all know of the Japanese suicide squad, how they would crash a plane into a ship and, and finish off a whole ship with just their plane, and they, of course they would die in that. But they're sac what are they sacrificing themselves for? They're sac sacrificing themselves for nationalism, some, for some love of the country. So, and others may sacrifice themselves for humanity to do some good for all people. But, but that, those, those ideals are limited they're more related with this plane and not related with the actual activities of the soul. So here Mahaprabhu's giving some idea of what is our, what is our, uh, what is the real standard of service. Now I'll go on, I'll read one more verse here. So we'll go on to, that was the fourth verse. Now here we have King of the Land of Love. That's the title. And it says, Ayinanda Tanuja Kinkaram Patita Mam Vishame Bhavambudo Kripaya Tava Pada Pankaja Stita Duli Sadrisham Vichintaya Ayinanda Tanuja Kinkaram Patita Mam Vishame Bhavambudo Kripaya Tava Pada Pankaja Stita Duli Sadrisham Vichintaya O son of Nanda Maharaj, I am your eternal servant. Yet because of my own karma, I have fallen into this terrible ocean of birth and death. Accept this fallen soul and consider me a particle of dust at your holy lotus feet. O son of Nanda Maharaj, I am your eternal servant. Yet because of my karma, I have fallen into this terrible ocean of birth and death. Accept this fallen soul and consider me a particle of dust at your holy lotus feet. Here Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prays, O Lord, please consider me. I want to enter into the realm of your merciful glance. I do not know how to take proper care of myself, and so I invite your care. Please accept me and give me entrance. You are my guardian. I want to live under your protection. And who is he? We hear of different conceptions of God, but here we have come to a beautiful conception of God, Krishna, the son of Nandamars. This is found only in Vrindavan. A great spiritual scholar, Raghupati Upadhyaya, once met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu near Mathura. There they had a discussion, and Mahaprabhu asked him, whom do, whom do we want to have as our master? Who is the final goal of our life? Raghupati Upadhyaya answered, Shrutim apare smritim itare bharatam anye bhajantu bhavabhita aham iha nanda bande yasya linde param brahma. Shrutim apare smritim itare bharatam anye bhajantu bhavabhita aham iha nanda bande yasya linde 
Param Brahma. Those who fear rebirth in this world may follow the advice of the Vedic scriptures. Others may follow the Mahabharat. But as for me, I follow Nandamarsh, in whose courtyard the supreme absolute truth plays as a child. In the system of Varnashram Dharma, Vedic social duty, the people in general are under the guidance of the Smriti, Vedic law. In this way, they are engaged in bodily duties with the color of godliness. Those who are free from physical demands, however, who are trying to transcend this life of enjoyment and exploitation, generally take their guidance from the Upanishads because uh, higher advice is given there. Raghupati Upajaya says, I don't care for all these things, but I feel a need to follow the guidance of my heart. I'm not so much concerned with the brain. I consider that real, peop that real peace has its connection with the heart. And my heart is always attracted by Krishna's father, Nanda. Krishna is said by authorities to be the supreme absolute truth. And that absolute is crawling in the courtyard of Nanda Mars. So I see, so I see concrete reality there. How has Nanda attracted the supreme absolute truth? So Nanda Mars is, Krishna appeared in Vrindavan and Nanda Mars is his father. And Krishna is serving his father sometimes crawling in the courtyard or in the patio, however you want to say that, and he's carrying his father's shoes on his head. Krishna is a small boy in that case. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, how has Nanda attracted the Supreme Absolute Truth? In the Srimad Bhagavatam, the devoted king Parikshit Maharaj asked the boy saint, Sukadeva Goswami, Nanda Kim Makarod Brahman, Shreya Evam Mahodayam, Yashoda Cha Mahabhaga, Papo Yasya Stanam Hari. O knower of Brahman, you are always merged in an exclusive conscious world. No trace of any mundane objective reference can be found in you, for you are always engaged in the subjective world of spirit. Never is your consciousness thrown towards this objective world of ours. And you say that Krishna is the supreme absolute truth. I ask one question of you, my master. What duty did Nanda Maharaj, what sort of realization did Nanda have that the absolute truth is so intimate with him that he appears as Nanda's son and crawls about in his courtyard. He seems to be under Nanda's clutches. What is this? This is, mo this is a most wonderful thing. Is it possible? The supreme s substance suckles her breast. This book. The yogis, the rishis, the great scholars and, and penance ma makers say that they sometimes have a rare peek into their object of aspiration and realization. And then they come back suddenly. They can't keep their attention in that plane for long periods of time. These are emancipationists. They're, they have a vision, but just momentary, momentarily a, gr a glimpse. How is it possible that the supreme substance sits on the lap of Yashoda and sucks her breast? If such things are real, if it is at all possible, then why should I not be attracted by that method by which I can have so much intimacy with the highest entity. So, uh, why should I run after salvation and so many other things when I see the parents of Krishna, they have so much intimacy with Krishna that Krishna's carrying, crawling in the courtyard of Nanda Mars, trying to serve his father, that Krishna's crying and, and taking milk from the breast of um, Yashoda. Why, how have they got such a high position of intimacy with the Lord? In his prayers, Raghupati Upadhyaya expresses a similar ego. He says, I don't want to be entangled in the subtle discussion and analysis, and analysis of the scriptures. I just want to send, surrender myself to Nanda and his party. I want to enlist my name in the group where Nanda is the master guide. So if Krishna is serving his father, then instead of just looking for Krishna, I, I'll try and serve Krishna's father. Krishna's father seems to have such an intimate relationship with Krishna that Krishna is crawling in Nanda's courtyard carrying his shoes. 
By the exercise of energy, karma, we can attain a good destination. Without faith in the achievements of karma, we may try for salvation by raising our consciousness, by gyan, by knowledge. But if we inquire into the solution of life with the help of the experts of that higher aspect, of that higher spiritual realm like Nanda and his party, we can enter into the land of love and dedication. So this means a relationship with the Lord. We can say in Vatsalya Ras, relationship of uh, Krishna's uh, father, mother, aunt, uncle, teacher, so many things are in this level. My faith, my common sense about religion tells me that if I see that supreme absolute truth, who is so rare and find him real, concrete, and intimate, appealing directly to my heart, then why should I engage myself in wild goose chasing? I shall appeal directly to the object of my search. But someone tells me that a hawk has snatched my ear, should I chase the hawk without first touching my ear to see if it is still there? If I can have the absolute truth so intimately, why should I allow myself to run hither and thither if I find that the absolute truth has kindly come with all his charm and that his charm is not a secret and many personages are being attracted by him, then why should I run after, why should I run after the phantasmagoria of the meditationless, of, of the meditationist, of the abstractionist and and renunci renunciation is never. So, I'll repeat that again. Then why, if I find that the absolute truth has kindly come with all his charm, and that his charm is not a secret, and many personages are being attracted by him, then why should I run after the phantasmagoria of the meditationist, of the abstractionist, and renunciationist? Never. It is common sense. The straight understanding is given by authorities that Krishna, the son of Nandamars, is supreme. So when we have when we have come up to that standard, then we can ask, O son of Nandamars, Krishna, king of the country of love, I appeal for your affection. I am your servant. I feel within myself that I have some connection with you. I am subordinate to you, but somehow I am in in adverse circumstances. I feel that there are so many enemies within me that are trying to take me away from you that I can't give my attention to you all the time. At the same time, I feel from the inner plane of my heart that you are my master. You are all in all to me. My heart won't be satisfied without your companionship. So I appeal to you. I am under unfavorable circumstances. I am suffering, and without your grace, I don't find any means of relief from my present imprisoned position. The soul, like a ray of sun. Here it is said, I feel that I am not eternally connected with you. If it were so, then this separation would have been impossible. Unlike an avatar, I am not your plenary portion. Other incarnations of the Supreme Lord are plenary expansions of him, Svamsa. But the jiva is a partial, partial representation of his potency, Vibhinamsa. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says the living entities are his eternal parts and parcels. The soul comes from marginal potency, Krishnera Tatasta Shakti, Beta Bed Prakash. And the soul is an atomic Fr fragmental part of the Lord's potency like a ray of the sun. But here the devotee prays, I'm not part and parcel of your of your own body. I'm not even a ray, but my representation is near to that of a particle of sand, a particle of dust, not even a particle of the ray coming out of your, the luster of your body. In this way, Sriman Mahaprabhu is representing on our behalf and our position must be of this type. I cannot indulge myself in thinking that I possess such fortune that I may be considered an inseparable part of you. I am a separable part, but I also want your grace. Please be kind upon me. I invoke your mercy for a special grant. Accept me in any position in your connection, even the lowest position. At least 
This must be sanctioned. Consider me a particle of dust at your feet. This is my prayer. So, so what I very much like about this verse, this verse, Ainanda Tanuja Kinkaram Batita Mam Vishame Babambudo, Kripaya Tabha Pada Pankaja Stita Duli Sadrisham Vichintaya. O son of Nanda Maharaj, I am your eternal servant. Yet because of my, my own karma, I have fallen into this terrible ocean of birth and death. Accept this fallen soul and consider me a particle of dust at your holy lotus feet. So what I especially like about this verse, which is brought out in the Prapana Jivanamrita, that you see the Prapana Jivanamrita, Srila Sridhar Marsh, he's written this and he's presented quotations from so many scriptures, but he's divided it in, into Upakramamritam, which means an introduction. And then it comes that the first there is descriptions from the scriptures about the value of, of Sharanagati, of surrender. And then there are chapters from the words of the devotees. And there are six limbs of surrender. Uh, humility, feeling oneself to be protected by the Lord, accepting everything favorable for the service of the Lord, rejecting everything that is unfavorable for the service of the Lord, then uh, comes, uh, so then feeling oneself to first humility, accepting everything, to feel oneself to be always protected by the Lord, accepting everything that's favorable for the service of the Lord, rejecting everything that's unfavorable, then comes what's called Goptrit Vevaranam. Goptrit Vevaranam means to accept the guardianship of the Lord, or in, in more normal terms we could say, to enter into the family of the Lord. That is Goptrit Vevaranam, how Guru Maharaj defines it. And the last thing is called Karpanya, or we can say Atmanivedan, it means being engaged, body, mind, uh, words, actions, everything in the service of the Lord. You using everything in the service of the Lord, and then at then after that is um, the the Lord Himself. These first is uh, from the scriptures about the beauty of surrender. Then six chapters, each one about the the limbs of surrender, the six, which what I mentioned, the six attributes of, of, of surrender. But that's in what's called bhakta vachanam. That's all in the words of the devotees. And then after that comes a section where, from the Lord himself, where he's describing the, 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 the glory of his surrendered souls and the, their descriptions. The, uh, from the Lord's own words, but that section is de is relating to the Lord glorifying His devotees' surrender, and then comes the what we can say the the the, the conclusion or the epilogue. The, that's present the structure of the book. Now, Mahaprabhu, we know that Mahaprabhu is the supreme Lord, but His words, the which principally are expressed in the in the in this sakshastikam in the eight verses of Ma, from Mahaprabhu's own mouth those words are not in the words of the supreme lord those are in the words of the devotees so what i like especially about this verse is that Mahaprabhu as he does in the sakshastikam he expresses himself as a fallen soul or as a devotee. He doesn't express himself as the Supreme Lord. So he's, his words are always the words of a devotee. And not directly we can say, oh, we, though we know he's Krishna covered with the Bhavakanti, the, 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 the sentiments and the beauty of, of Srimati Radharani, but he doesn't express himself as the Lord. He expresses himself as a devotee of the Lord. And therefore, I like very much this verse because it says, 
Ainanda tano jam kinkaram patita mam vishame babambudo, kripayatava para pankajas, dita duli sadrisham vijentaya. He says, O son of Nandamars, that's Krishna, O Krishna, I am your eternal servant, yet because of my own karma, I have fallen into this terrible ocean of birth and death. So we won't think of the Supreme Lord as saying, I've fallen into this ocean of birth and death. So accept this fallen soul and consider me a particle of dust at your holy lotus feet. As a particle of dust at your holy lotus feet, I will be, I will know, I will be taking the shelter of your lotus feet. That's not the prayer of the Lord himself. That's the prayer of the Lord's devotee. Somehow or other, I have fallen into this terrible ocean of birth and death. Now I desire to take shelter at your holy lotus feet. So that's the prayer of the devotee, and that's, that's the way it's being expressed in this way. And then there's the example given by Sri the Sridhar Maharaj of saying, normally people have a very hazy conception of what it means to understand a relationship with the Lord and following the Lord. Their idea is that the goal of, of spirituality is something very hazy or nebulous. They're, they're, and they're running in all directions of, about, after something that they don't even understand. And, and here, Srila Sridhar Marsh compares that to a, a term we know, a wild goose chase. Just running in all directions, but they don't really know what they're looking for or what they're running after. So that's a wild goose chase. And then, Guru Maharaj gives his own comparison. He says, if I hear that a hawk has come down and grabbed my ear, you know, we sometimes play this game with children. You know, we go like this. Oh, I got your nose. I have your nose. So as I, if I hear that a hawk has come down like a child, I hear, a hawk has come down and grabbed my ear. Why go running in all directions, supposedly after where the hawk went? Or will I first just check, oh, my ear is still there? Now, people have no real sense when it comes to understanding what is the goal of life and, and, and what direction should they proceed. So then Guru Maharaj gives an example. He says, I hear about Krishna, and I hear about Krishna being the Supreme Lord, but I'm not even addressing this directly to Krishna. I'm addressing this to Krishna's father, in the sense of Vatsalyaras, of, of the sonhood of Godhead. He's saying, oh, I see that Krishna is the son of Nandamars, and it's described how Krishna's crawling in his father's in his father's backyard, we can say, and, and, or in his father's yard. And he's got his father's shoes on his head. And like a, like a child, he's bringing his father's shoes to him. And I see that the Lord has that intimate relationship with Nandamarsh. And Krishna's crying, and his mother's coming, and Krishna's crawling on her lap and sucking on her breast. And how have they attained such an intimacy with the Lord? This is one of the stage, one of the rasas of Vatsalya Ras, of, 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 of the, 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 what's interesting there is the do, devotee is not praying to the Lord to be maintained. The devotee is actually praying to maintain the Lord. That is what's very unusual in this relationship of the sonhood or, or sonhood or daughterhood, we can say, of Godhead. I mean, that the, well, sonhood of Godhead, it's Krishna is the son. So Krishna has father and mother, and they're, they're have such an intimate relationship. And Mahaprabhu is admiring that. That has more substance to me, he says, that has more substance to me than just running in all directions after some illusion. I'm not interested in that illusion. I'm interested in something more tangible. And at least I see, I can see 
right away that that tangible relationship with the Lord has been attained by Nanda Maharaj and Shodamayi. So instead of just running after Krishna or so many stories and fables about what is divinity, rather I can see that Krishna has that relationship with his father and mother. So I'm interested in gaining entrance into their service. Anyway, this is a very nice verse and as I said, what I always like about this verse is it's not expressed in the mood of the of of the Lord. Mahaprabhu is not expressing himself as the Lord, but rather he is expressing himself as, you can say, as I want to be have a relationship with you, you pick me up as an atom of dust at your lotus feet. So I'm going to stop here. That again, we were reading this verse, Ainanda Tanuja Kinkaram Patita Mam Vishame Bhavambudo, Kripaya Tava Pada Pankaja, Stita Duli Sadrisham Vij Sadrisham Vichintaya. King of the land of love, O son of Nanda Maharaj, I am your eternal servant, and because of my own karma I have fallen into this terrible ocean of birth and death. Accept this fallen soul and consider me a particle of dust at your holy lotus feet. I very much like these commentaries of Srila Sridhar Maharaj on the verses of Sikshastakam. He's giving them in his own in his own words in there. And each each time he's saying each explanation he is given, it says illumination, and it really does illuminate the the words of Mahaprabhu. So now we'll sing Hari Haraya. You have cartos, and I'll you you can sing. Ah. Uh -huh. No, you play, you chant. Hariya Raya Nama Krishna Jarvaya Nama Hariya Raya Nama Krishna Jarvaya Nama Jarvaya Maravaya Keshavaya Nama Gopal Govinda Ram Shimadu Sudana Giri Dari Gopinatha Madana Mohana Chaitanya Nityananda Sri Advaita Chandra Gananara Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jai Rupa Sanatan You can use the handle. Jiva Gopala Bhatta Dasaragana Echai Gosai Kori Karana Bhandan Jau Ike Vignana Shabhista Puran Echai Gosai Jar Muitarada Tasabara Pada Renu Mora Pancha Gras Tadir Charana Sevi Vata Sani Vas Jana may jana me for a yabi lash. A chai go sai jabe braje koi la bas. 
राधा कृष्ण नित्य लीला खोरी ला प्रकाश आनंद बोलो हरी बज वृंदवान श्री गुरु वैष्णव पारे माझाई अमान श्री गुरु वैष्णव पार पद्म कोरिया नाम संकीर्तन को है नर हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नीता गो हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो जय गो हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो जय सुपरिकर शिशि गुरु गुरंग गंधार्विक गिरिदार जो की जाए तरिया शिशि गुरु गुरंग गंधार्विक गिरिदार जो की जाए वेरी ब्यूटिफुल ओके ओके जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमंस पर जाकचार्य अष्टार सर श्री श्रीमद शील भक्ति सुंदर गोविंद देव गोसाई महाराज की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमंस पर जाकचार्य अष्टार सर श्री श्रीमद शील भक्ति रखक श्रीर देव गोसाई महाराज की जय जय भगवान शील भक्ति सुनंत सरस्वती गोसाई ठाकुर की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद श्रील गोर की शोरदास बाबा जी महाराज की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद श्रील सचिदनंद भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद वैष्णव सर्वभौम श्रील जगन्नाथ दास बाबा जी महाराज की जय रूबनुग गुरु भार्ग की जय नामचार्य श्रील हरिदास ठाकुर की जय श्री रूप सनातन बत रघुनाथ श्री जीव गोपाल बद दास रघुनाथ शद गो स्वामी प्रभु की जय प्रेम जी गो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदान हर श्री वासुदेव श्री गौर भक्त वृंद की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद विश्वरेण शील भक्ति वेदांत स्वाई महाराज प्रभुपद की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद शील भक्ति निर्मल आचार्य महाराज की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय श्री चैतन्य सरस्वत मत आचार्य वृंद की जय श्री नवदीप धाम की जय श्री राम मायापुर की जय सपर्षद श्री नित्यानंद प्रभु की जय सपर्षद श्री मान महाप्रभु की जय श्री कोलदीप की जय श्री चैतन्य सरस्वत मत की जय सोके श्री चैतन्य सरस्वत सेवाश्रम की जय गंगा देवी की जय तुलासी महारानी की जय भक्ति देवी की जय श्री वृंदावन धाम की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गो गोपी गो प्रधान श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड कलिंदी अमुन जो की जाय साम वेद भक्त वृंद की जाय श्री हरे नाम सांकीर्तन की जाय श्रीपद भक्ति मंदव पूरी महाराज की जाय ऑल दी श्री ऑल दी असेंबल दी वर्तीज की जाय 
गौर प्रेम नंदे हरे हरे